everybody, and from the Sussex Handmade Soap Company here. Lovely to see you all on another Friday. Actually, it's not Friday, it's Thursday, but when I put this video up, it will be a Friday. So, welcome to whatever day of the week you happen to be watching this on. Today we are going all natural again. We're testing out some more plant-based and clay-based colourants, and I want to create a rainbow. Um, Rainbows are everywhere at the moment. You see them for all kinds of positive things. Um, oh my god, I just got attacked by a fly. There is one fly in my house that just, wherever I am, it blooming finds me. Right, where was I? Rainbows, positive things. Um, yeah, they've been everywhere for supporting the NHS. They're a symbol of pride. Um, and to me, they're just a really positive, a sign of good things and people being kind and nice to each other. So, let's see if we can create <laughs> a rainbow out of natural colourants. So, I'm going to go with red clay, I'm going to go with anatto, I'm going to go with yellow clay, I'm going to go with spirulina, nettle powder, what comes after green? Blue, I'm going to use indigo dye, and then I'm going to use indigo root powder, and lastly, I'm going to use some purple Brazilian clay. So, we've got quite a lot to do, so the design itself is going to be relatively simple, but um, let's see how we get on. So we're going to be working with a lot of colours in today's soap, so for this reason, I'm going to want a light trace when I blend today. I'm just tipping our cooled lye water into our liquid oils and I'm going to bring the whole lot just past emulsion as I say to a very light trace because we are going to have seven colours that we need to incorporate so I don't want it to be too thick otherwise we run the risk of it not pouring very nicely towards the end. Obviously, seven colours to a rainbow, it means I need seven little pots to split this down equally into each. So they're all split down now, I'm happy enough with that. There might be a couple of grams out here or there, but that doesn't really matter. It looks pretty even to me. These pots were really handy. I actually got them from the supermarket with sea salt in them, uh, and I don't like throwing things away. And I was making sea salt soap, but only a small quantity, so I bought the sea salt from the supermarket and I therefore had lots of pots left over, which today have turned out to be incredibly useful. Now we need to colour the seven portions of the rainbow. And for the red, I've chosen red Moroccan clay. This is mixed with a little bit of our liquid oils and we've got about a teaspoon of red, Mor red Moroccan clay in there. This isn't gonna create a really, really vibrant red. It's probably gonna be more of a muted brick red but it's the best sort of natural red that I can find. <clears throat> Red's a hard one for me to actually find in uh, nature. I think it's even quite a hard one to get a decent red out of mica as well. It's just a, a tricky colour is our red. I'm going to mix these in as I go, so I'm going to mix this red in now taking care to get it all nicely blended. Don't want any white showing through in these designs. For the orange, I've gone with Anato Extract. I actually got a liquid Anato Extract from my supplier and I've just combined it with a little bit of, say, of the liquid oils. Uh, there's not a lot in there, just a few drops really, because I've heard that it's quite strong. To be honest, this is my first time working with Anato. I've had it in the cupboard for ages and I've never quite had an occasion to bring it out and test it. So this is that occasion. Let's hope it lives up to it. I've heard it'll turn it a kind of a yellowy orange colour, so we'll see how it's working. Okay, that's quite muted at the moment. We might add a little bit more into there. Just a few more drops, I reckon. For the yellow, it's back to the old faithful clays. This is French yellow clay. 
looks really mustardy in the pot, but I promise you, once it's in the soap, it won't look that sort of dirty colour. It's still not going to be, I say, hugely bright, but it's not going to be quite so mustardy coloured. It'll be a, a little bit brighter, we hope. And again, these are all mixed with our liquid oils, um, and it's generally about a teaspoon that I've been using um, of everything in them. So a teaspoon of the yellow clay, a teaspoon of the red clay, a few drops of the annatto, but I think everything else was pretty much a teaspoon's worth mixed with liquid oils. For the green, we have nettle leaf powder, which again, mixed with liquid oils, about a teaspoon, <laughs> same as all the others. I find nettle leaf powder is quite a nice green. I quite like the green that this turns, and it is one that I use quite a lot when I am naturally colouring soaps. That one can go in there. can already see these starting to thicken up, so I think I need to work a little bit quicker. The blue. Now the blue is indigo dye. Uh, just a small amount of this one again, not a whole teaspoon, probably only about a quarter teaspoon. I haven't used a lot at all. It's very expensive, but it gives such a fantastic blue colour, the concentrated dye. So that can go in this one here. I love it. I love it so much. It is such, such a bright blue that it almost doesn't look natural. But I can assure you that it is. Whisk that one in. Say, so, an amazing shade of blue. One of my favourite dyes to work with, or natural colourants to work with. But I don't do it very often because, like I say, it is a very expensive. But when you look at the colour results, you can kind of see why. So that's blue. Next will be indigo. And for the indigo, again, I'm using the indigo, but I'm not using indigo dye, I am using indigo root powder which is this one here. And it's not gonna give such a bright color as the indigo dye, which is much more concentrated. This is gonna give more of a, uh, hopefully, bluey purple kind of color. And for the violet, back to the clays, we've got purple Brazilian clay to create the violet in our rainbow. I like purple Brazilian clay, it does give a nice sort of pale purple effect, or well, I think it does anyway. Just adding the tiniest little bit more of the indigo root powder in there, just to try and get it to brighten up a little bit, because rainbows aren't meant to be dull like that, they're meant to be bright. There we go. It's darkening up a little now, which is good. I'm half tempted <laughs> to add a tiny bit of the um, Brazilian purple clay as well, just to make it a bit more purpley coloured. And I think I'm going to do that. Again, I'm chopping and changing because this soap isn't being sold, it's not been assessed, which means that I can play like this. I'm just going to scrape out what was left in the uh, pot that I tipped into that one. Just to hopefully allow the two colours to combine and create my indigo colour for my rainbow. Might go wrong. But this is all about experimenting. I say I've never done this before, I just wanted to see if it was possible. See what we can come up with. Well, I'm going to move on to the others now anyway before they firm up too much. Say so the orange, again I'm just going to add a tiny little bit more. That's the annatto seed, oh sorry, the annatto extract there. So that is about a quarter of a teaspoon, no more than that. And there we go, that's brightening it up nicely now. Lovely, that's the kind of orange I was wanting for my rainbow. Of 
course, remember that all of these, after they cure and after they saponify, the colours could well change. Natural colourants do have a habit of changing, especially over time. They will fade, but that's kind of to be expected, unfortunately. <laughs> Righty ho! I think we're ready to begin filling our mould. These are our uh, rainbow colours. Right, we're going to fill it in reverse so that when it's standing upright, when it's been cut, the colours are in the right order. So we'll be starting with the violet. And all I'm going to do is go for a really simple, almost like a sort of tiger stripe design, I suppose. I'm going to pour the whole of the batter just along the centre, like so. I did wonder about doing some kind of intricate design or swirl. I thought, now, do you know what? I'm just going to leave this one, in terms of the swirl and design, pretty simple. Scraping out as much as I can. So now onto our indigo. Again, not entirely happy with this one, but we'll see how it looks in the finished design. Holding it up so it breaks through the lower level and just tipping it all out. I love watching the colours sort of blending together as I do this. It's got to be one of the most satisfying things about the soap making is watching the way the colours sort of interact with each other and play with each other. Let's get that out. Now, if I wasn't happy with the indigo, I'm completely the opposite with the blue. I love it. Just look at that blue colour. It is fantastic. That's going to go down over the top of that one. Right, I've come to an executive decision and added a little bit of spirulina powder in to combine with the nettle powder to hopefully make this green a little darker because I'm not 100% happy with this one either. So we'll just get this one mixed in, then we'll add it over the top. As it's starting to firm up, it is harder for them to break through the lower levels, so I'm holding it a little bit higher. Now we're on to our French green clay yellow, which again, just hold it up nice and high and just pour it over the top of that green. Now our orange, and I don't know if this one's going to fade much in the soap or not, I'm not sure how this behaves in cold processed soap. But I really hope it doesn't fade because I'm loving this orange colour that's coming out of it. I think it's beautiful. Really, really vibrant. I can see me using this in some summer, bright, happy, themed soaps. You almost want to eat it, don't you? It looks like mango sorbet or something. But I do not suggest eating it because that would be a very silly thing to do indeed. And would probably see you spending the rest of the day up in the hospital. And to finish off, our lovely red. Our nice uh, Moroccan red clay. Here we go. Now to be honest, I'm not entirely convinced this is going to look much like a rainbow. It's certainly not going to look like the stereotypical rainbows that you see or the kind of rainbows that the children draw with the bright, vibrant colours. But this is more a little experiment just to show you the kind of colours and designs you can try and create when you are using purely natural colourants. And by that I mean the clays, I mean the colours derived from botanicals, things like that. because there is a whole spectrum of colour that you can create and although a lot of it isn't going to be the same as the colours you can create with the micas and the oxides and things like that you can still get a really pretty colour palette so we'll see what my rainbow looks like tomorrow and uh, <laughs> at least it'll show you the kind of colours you can create if nothing else right let's shake this out, tap it down And what shall we do to the top? Can't leave it like that. 
I reckon just a little simple up and down swirl, I reckon. Just to make the top look slightly more attractive. Doesn't need a lot. And that'll probably do. There we go. Our uh, rainbow soap, which granted, doesn't look like a lot like a rainbow at the moment. It might tomorrow, it might not. Hopefully, whatever happens, we're going to have a nicely swirled soap. <laughs> I'll see you in time for the cutting. So here we are a little bit later on, probably about 20 hours or so, with our rainbow soap. It's got a bit of soda ash on the top, but I'm not too fussed about that. It could be steamed off gently if I wanted to, but I'm not bothered. And it'll wash off the first time the soap's used, and it's completely harmless. So in my mind, there's no real need to get rid of it. Right, I'm going to, without further ado, measure this one out and get it chopped up so we can see what our rainbow is like. So here is our rainbow soap. And let's be honest, does it look like a stereotypical rainbow? No, not really. But what we have got are lots of pretty all natural colours there. We've got the red clay, the anatto, the yellow clay, the spirulina and nettle powder, the indigo dye, the indigo powder with a little bit of indigo dye mixed in, and the uh, Brazilian purple clay at the bottom there. So although we haven't got a stereotypical rainbow, you, admittedly you wouldn't look at this and go, oh wow, it's a rainbow. But we've got some pretty colours there, and it goes to show that there is a whole spectrum of colours out there if you are only using natural colourants. And I think it might even have helped if I had actually done each layer straight rather than doing the uh, tiger swirl. So, while we haven't created a normal sort of rainbow, we have created quite a pretty array of colours, and they're actually showing up a lot better here now than they were in the cutting part of the video. The settings weren't great in that and the colours were looking a bit washed out. But here we have what it actually looks like and it does look much more true to life on the screen now than it did earlier. So we created a pretty bar of soap. It wouldn't pass for being a rainbow, I'm not going to pretend that it would. But it's all natural, it's all good, it's all plant based or clay based. And I'm pretty happy with what I've created. And now I've got all these colours, I've kind of got a starting block to show me what kind of colours I can create in future soaps going forwards. So that is brilliant. Hopefully this has shown you what can be achieved with natural colourants and clays and all the kind of spectrum of colours that you can create. As you can see, they're certainly not dull. That's about it for today. You can always view our website, which is just here. And if you choose to purchase anything, you can use our discount code which is just here. I hope you guys all have a lovely weekend. Feel free to give us a like or a subscribe or throw down a comment in the comments box. We'd love to read what you think about these soaps and what you think about using natural colourants as well. Are there any natural colourants you'd like to see us testing on here? Have you got any favourites, any that you find perhaps a little hard to work with? Put those comments down in the box so we can take them on board and see what we can create with them. And I will see you next week. Bye!